Right, okay, fan reaction time then. Burnley nil, Preston North End nil. I don't think it's an overreaction to say that that was the worst performance of the season so far. You could probably argue it was Sunderland. But at least with Sunderland, there was mitigating circumstances surrounding it with all the upheaval around the squad and not knowing who's coming and going and that sort of stuff. So for me, they kind of get like a bit of a free, not a free pass, if you will, but a little bit of leeway for that game. Um, but today, there's no excuse. We were just awful. And against Sunderland, we're playing against a good side that's up at the top end of the table. Preston only won their second game of the season on Wednesday. Um, and then they're playing a quick turnaround, Saturday afternoon, early kickoff. And they looked like, like they had more energy in their legs than us. They looked like they were more up for it than we were. We were just poor. We were poor in every single... No, and not every single... Defensively, we looked okay, to be fair. Um, as a defensive unit we looked okay but even then I thought the full backs were poor um, there's a reason why Humphreys went off at half time it's because he was god awful but I do feel a bit sorry for him because um, I believe he's left footed and he's playing at right back completely out of position um, so he was poor but I don't particularly blame him I, I, I feel like it was a poor decision to start him there in the first place but he got exposed yeah m midfield again too slow. I think I feel like I'm repeating myself. I've been saying the same thing about the midfield since the opening. Well, no, since since we we got the the midfield three that we've got now, the Hannibal, Cullen, uh, and Brownell. I've been saying it since that Blackburn game. It just kind of feels a little slow. It doesn't really feel like it's got enough creativity in it. I feel like Hannibal was fantastic today. Um, I felt like the other two were poor. Um, there's been a debate, and, and, and I agree with it, there's a debate on the hashtag at the minute about who do we drop in midfield, because it's not creative enough, and we do need to bring Fleming in there. Some people could argue, keep the midfield as it is and stick Fleming up front instead of Lyle, but I'll get on to Lyle in a minute. That's not personally what I'd do. Um, I thought Hannibal was fantastic today. I thought Cullen didn't have his best game. I thought Browner was, was pretty poor, if I'm honest with you. Um, and I like Josh. Um, I, I feel like he's, other than his goals... I don't feel like he's been great this season as Josh. Um, he's been getting a couple of man of performances, all to be fair, um, off uh, the club and, and stuff like that. I think I'd give it Esteve in pretty much every game apart from one, where, to be fair, I think I might have given it Brownell once. Um, but I think on the whole this season, he hasn't been great. I thought today he wasn't great as well. Um, so for me, maybe try Fleming, put Hannibal a little bit deeper um, alongside Cullen. Or maybe let's just not have two defensive midfielders. I know the midfield can be quite fluid, um, and we'll see Hannibal uh, dropping back into the middle and letting Brownell uh, overtake him and stuff. But I don't know. I, I, there was a lot of mistakes from pretty much everybody today. Um, there were so many times when we'd get the ball in a good position or look to be building some momentum, and then we just silly pass, silly touch, uh, straight out of play. Ultimately, all over the pitch. Except defensively, we weren't good enough today. We really, really weren't good enough. It's too slow, it's too pedestrian. And I feel like I, I was arguing the case um, last time out after Plymouth, kind of like saying I'm not really understanding what all the negativity is about when we, you know, we'd just gone second. Um, and I stand by that in the sense that I don't really feel like it was the right time to be spouting all the negativity. Um, but the same issues are there, we're too slow. Let's look at the last three games as a perfect example. Oxford United away, should be beating them, didn't. Plymouth at home, should be beating them, did, just. And Preston at home, should be beating them. It's not arrogant to say we should be beating them three teams. If you want to win the championship, you should be beating them three teams. We scored one goal in them three games, and that was a penalty. So it's it's not it's it's something's just not clicking, is it going forward? And for me, it's the midfield. Um, it's, it's just not enough creativity in that midfield, and they move the ball so slow. But it's not just the midfield that moved the ball slow. That that starts all the way at the back with traffic. I'm not saying it's his fault, but I'm saying literally everybody on the pitch. It starts at the back all the way to the front. Everybody is moving the ball too slow. The amount of times that Trafford had it in a good position, he take too long to get it out wide, and then they just do a couple of triangles and eventually get it out wide, or even Esteve, or you know Connor Roberts. There was a perfect scenario um, 
I think, I, I think was it Loren? Um, in the 97th minute, we had a chance to maybe get the ball forward. He does some sort of like weird spinny thing and passes it backwards. That just p personifies where we are this season and what we've done so far this season. Um, Lyle's getting a bit of stick as well again. And look, he wasn't great. I thought he was pretty anonymous. And I, I do remember that their centre-backs were bullying him pretty much throughout the entire game. I think he, I don't know what the exact stats are before somebody goes, I think you'll find something. Um, but I seem to remember seeing him win one duel um, against their centre-back. Again, I'm not exactly sure how that stat will make me look. But I, when I was watching the game, I remember, I, I actually tweeted it off the Turfcast account. I said, Lars Foster has been getting bullied every single time off their defenders. And literally, as I press send, um, the ball goes to him. He does very well to hold the defender off and actually creates an attack. Um, which obviously we didn't score from, but still. But there were just so many times where he just needs to be stronger. That's the point I'm trying to make. He just he just needs to be stronger. Like the defenders are get right up into his space, get on his back, get in front of him too easily. Sometimes he'd be a bit be a bit of pushing and shoving, and a better referee would have potentially given a free kick. But he just wasn't strong enough. He constantly got bullied off the ball and the Preston defender either pulled him to the ground, got in front of him or Lyle just lost it with a bad touch because he couldn't handle the pressure of the defence. Um, I don't think it's his fault that he's been so poor this season. I feel like it's the lack of creativity in midfield that isn't helping. I would like to see Lyle and Zian Fleming up top, maybe Zian in the 10 or even try two up front. Something like that um, before we drop Lyle. I feel like that would be the best course of action and potentially get somebody with a little bit more creativity in the midfield, like, you know, as Ian Fleming in the 10 role or, or even Josh Loren. Um, he's not creative as such as Josh Loren, is he? But he drags us up the pitch. He didn't, he didn't do it today, but he didn't really have a chance, to be fair. Um, so, yeah. Uh, referee, gotta, gotta mention the referee. Absolutely honking. He was awful. He stopped the game far too much. He was far too stop-start. And this is for both teams. I don't know why Preston fans are arguing with me on Twitter because I said the referee was awful. He was awful for both teams. Um, we've got lucky with that offside call as well. Again, another silly Preston fan whinging on Twitter because I said the referee was awful. And he said, well, it's because of him you got a point today, mate. Well, actually, that's a linesman. Is that what he could overrule him? Like, what? When have you ever seen a referee overrule a linesman on an offside call? It just doesn't happen. So, yeah, the officials were poor, but that referee, stop, start, stop, start. And, and at first, in the first, like, 10 minutes, I kind of felt like he was letting too much go. But then he went full circle and just blew for everything. Um, every time they threw themselves to the ground in the dying minutes when they were starting to waste time, which, you know, it's game management, it's what you do, don't really have any complaints about them doing it, but a better referee would not blow every single time and let the game flow a bit, so then it kind of opens the game up more. Referee was awful. And for somebody who's been refereeing for 15 years, I think I saw on, on the internet somewhere today, that's absolutely awful. Awful referee, the worst I've seen at the turf in a very long time, but yeah. Back to our performance, not good enough, ultimately. We weren't good enough today, we were poor, didn't create enough. I think, I think we had one shot on target today, I think I saw. Um, I know some of you don't like the XG uh, stat, but our XG was lower than theirs, despite us having a lot more of the ball. And it's just the same issues, isn't it? Again, every single week. Um, but what I will say is, I do feel like this is, I know I said it on the 60 second review, but I'll just say it again. I do feel like this is a bit of a step back, because against... Oxford, we were better than what we were against Portsmouth, against Plymouth, we were better than what we were against Oxford, and you kind of felt like we were slowly starting to get better, but then we've just put in, in my opinion, what is the worst performance of the season. Um, so yeah, not great, something needs to change. For me, we've got to shuffle the pack a little bit. What One thing that has frustrated me, and I'm not one to criticise Parker so early into his reign, but one thing that frustrated me was after the game against Plymouth um, Parker did say that you know maybe Burnley tired in the uh, second half because um, we played a game not too long before that and that's why Burnley kind of sat back because they were tired well why not shuffle the pack then why not make some more changes I, I, I don't understand that like he just played the same team didn't he pretty much I think it was the same team wasn't it off the top of my head uh, and it, it, it just and then, and then we put in that performance and I'm thinking, well, maybe three games in a week is just too much for these, these lads at the minute. So then shuffle the pack. But I, I, I think now, even with the two weeks rest, I'd be shuffling that pack. Um, Connor Roberts has to start. I mean, he didn't really offer too much in the second half, to be fair. Um, but he was definitely a lot more solid than what Humphreys was. Um, 
hopefully Warren will be getting there or thereabouts with his injury um, as well. I don't think he'll be back fit from a broken foot, will he? Um, but hopefully he'll be getting there or there, thereabouts. And hopefully Zian Fleming can play. Um, I'd like to see Lyle Foster up front with Fleming, Fleming in the 10 and then maybe drop one of the midfield three. For me, maybe Brownhill, but again, somebody argued the point on Twitter that he's the only one scoring the goals at the minute or he's the highest goal scorer. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think he's been great. I don't think you can drop Hannibal because of how good he is and I don't particularly think you can drop Cole. But then again, Brownhill's a captain, so it's, gonna, it's a difficult call, to be fair, for the midfield. Maybe drop Hannibal, um, but I don't think I think Hannibal was the best of the midfield free today. Um, but I can understand the arguments for dropping Hannibal, but I think it would be incredibly harsh on him. But yeah, um, five points from Oxford, Plymouth and Preston isn't good enough um, for what we want to achieve. We had the perfect chance to go to the top of the table today and we blew it and a missed opportunity to play a team that's down there at home with a chance to go top of the table and not capitalise on that is a missed opportunity no matter how you look at it but yeah something's got to change it's too pedestrian shuffle the pack a little bit please Scott and hopefully after the international break we can maybe start to click again I say again not that we've clicked yet after the first two games of the season um, but then we can start to click and, and really make an assault on this league because after watching you know the, the, the last few weeks and watching Leeds and Sunderland um, and Watford who had a good start and stuff Sheffield United are doing well to be fair but I, I kind of do feel like it, it's there for the taking if somebody can put a few results together which we should have done in the last week um, then they can start to pull away but yeah missed opportunity and we're going to need to start moving the ball quicker